Hello and welcome back to Span TV. For those that caught my other video, this is another speed test of the Synology RS1619XS Plus. We're using picture off picture rather than rendering from the screen because of the performance dip it does cause on speed tests. So I do apologize. For more information on that, do check out my video regarding the Sonic Solo 10G adapter to explain why recording off picture is so difficult in this context. But what I'm doing today is exactly the same test to see how that Sonic Solo compares with the QNAP Thunderbolt to 10G adapter. We're utilizing the Synology RS1619XS Plus, which is a Xeon quad-core based NAS. Big old rack mount there in the background. We'll move you out of the way so you can see the LEDs drawing access. And what we're going to do is set this up as a mapped network drive, and then we're going to use AJA and Blackmagic to do full speed tests on this device, thanks to that Thunderbolt to 10GB adapter from QNAP, known as the QNA T3 10G T1 or 1T. Now, in my previous video, one of you did mention that I didn't show you how to set up the map network drive. I've done that a few times, but just for this video, I'll show you how easy it is. Once you connect um, your Thunderbolt cable into the adapter that it arrives with, and then connect it to a 10GB card that you install in your Synology NAS, and that is an extra you have to buy for this NAS, what will happen is you use the Synology Assistant software to scan your local network and the adapter will have created a brand new Ethernet network next to your usual internet connection. So I've got my traditional internet connectivity via wireless and I've got a LAN port that I'm not using but also this new network Ethernet 3 is my Thunderbolt to 10 GPU connection. From there, once we've scanned our local network, the NAS will appear as it does here in the Synology Assistant. And we could double click it to go into the NAS software if we wanted and it will go straight into DSM via this device. Or, so it will open it straight there and there's the login to the RS3617XS if we want to log into it. Sorry if the key banging is annoying now on camera. And there is the user interface over 10 GBE via Thunderbolt to that device. But what we want to do to do these speed tests is use a mapped network drive. So we right click go to map drive. We would then log in with the credentials on the device. Sorry for the noise there, but this is a rack mount device. And from there, we've created four SSD. We put four SSDs inside this device in a RAID 0 environment using 250 gig Samsung Evo 860 drives. And once again, that's a RAID 0 for improved performance. From here, once we found the device and found the folder, a shared folder we created, select a drive letter, in this case we're going to go for Q, click next, and it's saying that we've got the drive set up, we click finish, and that's it. Now we've got a mapped network drive. If we go into my computer, from here we can see my C drive and our new mapped network drive that is there, that we can interact with like a local file or folder on our PC. So from here we just need to use the benchmark software. So first and foremost, we're going to use AJA testing. It's a video testing software, and we're going to begin that test. Now, this is on my local hard drive right now. This is accessing C, so my local hard drive. And right now, I'm getting write speeds of between 350 and 700, depending on the density of the file, and it will dip up and down. However, if we switch to the newly mapped network drive, when we click start, we're now getting read and write speeds well in excess of 800 megs, occasionally pipping into 900 there. Remember, what you, see, what you see is an average there, so do bear that in mind. But the read and write speeds are certainly higher on that NAS via that connection than on my local hard drive. And if you are editing 1080p and 4K media, these are the sort of speeds that you need to be looking at. Um, so once again, if we move forward from that, I'm going to give you, as I did in the previous video, here is what happens if I try to record from the screen. So while recording, speeds will dip. And unfortunately, that is a common occurrence when trying to capture from screen recording. So it is worth bearing in mind that if you are going to record read and write speeds, on your desktop using capture software, if it utilizes the CPU of your host machine, the read and write speeds will suffer accordingly. So do remember that when doing speed tests for your own YouTube channel or testing for yourself. So we're gonna exit that recording software fully, make sure that doesn't affect performance. Now we're gonna make our way to the Blackmagic speed test. From here, we're gonna do one gigabyte files 
and we're going to make sure to select our SSD RAID 0 on the Synology NAS. I'm going to go there. And again, the QNAP adapter is powered by bus power, so it's utilizing the Thunderbolt or 10GBE, so it doesn't require any additional power. It also has an internal fan and cooling system that will keep this device lovely and cool and running. And I think it retails for about 180, 190, very affordable. And right now, between this and the Sonnet adapter, which is this bad boy here, we are seeing some incredible technology coming out of Thunderbolt 10GBE. So if we begin the Blackmagic speed test, as mentioned in my previous videos, whereas AJA does tend to give you better average results, Blackmagic is a lot more gradual in the results it gives you. They're both used for testing video uh, read and write speeds, but as you can see, the speeds are incrementally growing. <clears throat> We're seeing it raised by about 40 to 50 megs each wave, and if you listen very carefully, you can hear the fan on the Synology ramp up with each wave. Listen carefully. And typically, that will always be during a right action. Now, the fans in question are two fans that are located at the base of the board there, or the controller board on the RS-1619XS. So they're promoting lots of airflow to make sure the CPU and the memory and the components aren't getting overheated. But we are seeing great results from this device. Now we've just broken into the 800 megs per second because once again Blackmagic is an incremental software and I am sorry that we're conducting this picture off picture. But it does go to show that we're still seeing near identical results to that of the Sonic Solo but in a far more affordable fashion. And also let's not overlook the fact that we are using a QNAP adapter on a Synology NAS. Best of both worlds, and definitely something that I think should be promoted. But apart from that, that has been a 10 GBE speed test. Let's turn that off, because that fan is probably interfering with something chronic. That has been a 10 uh, Thunderbolt to 10 GBE speed test of the RS1619XS Plus, utilizing the brand new QNAP Thunderbolt adapter, the QNA T3 10G1T. Again, do check those out and do check out my other videos for speed tests and do look out for the new Thunderbolt units that are arriving just before the end of 2018. Thank you so much for watching.